Hi, and welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I made this art desk in a fungi forest. Mother's Day is coming up, so I thought I would dedicate my next build to my mother. There she is. My mum is an artist who loves nature and all things mushroom related. She paints and illustrates all things fungi and the creatures who live amongst them. I'm planning to recreate her art desk as well as a small little base that looks like a mushroom undergrowth so she can feel like she lives on the forest floor herself. I'm at my parents house this week and I don't have my usual crafting supplies so it's time to go shopping. Mamma mia! I found a lot of handy craft bits in this writing desk, an offcut of MDF board for the base, and I went to the local craft store to get balsa wood sticks and woodcraft sticks. Knocked up this table with something called tiger glue and this little picnic table for the side. I started off with making miniature things to clutter the desk with. I was thinking specifically about this paper document folder thing that's crammed in on the side. I wanted to make miniature plastic pockets so I thought that'd be really cute. Um, I basically just got an old plastic pocket, cut out the corner, delicately glued the open edge with a glue stick and put a document inside. This notebook I made out of the back of a broken plastic folder, stabbed some holes in it with a sewing needle, I made some little paper pages and threaded through a pen spring. I made the wire folder stand thing out of two paper clips that I bent and then super glued together. <laughs> so I'm back home and here are all the things I created while I was away. You need to be verified on YouTube to be able to make a video longer than like 15 minutes. So unfortunately I can't show you how I made all of these things, but I'll choose a couple of main things and show you what I did. Here's how to make a book. So to make a book, you just get a strip of paper and then fold it over to whatever your desired book size is. Make them kind of thin so you can stack them together just like this. I hate using rulers, so I just measured them against themselves, which gives it that slapdash uneven book look that everybody loves. Um, I'm, <laughs> I left me having to trim the sides, but you could definitely rule a line and make it far more precise than this. For the cover, you just want to get a piece of cardboard that's kind of thin or like has flexibility, but is also a bit more sturdier than your pages. Make the cover a little bit wider than your pages and use like a stick or something to help you bend the spine in shape. Now to stick these together, there's a couple of different methods I've seen online. I just dunk this in PVA glue, um, like a school craft glue, and stuck them together thinking that that would be the quickest and fastest way to do it. And you might need to stick the glue between the pages as well to hold the individual books together. I use this peg, hopefully that dries fine. I'm going to set that aside and while it's drying I'm going to paint the cover. I just use the cheapest acrylics that I can find. I think I've had this tube of paint since I was in high school. Now while that's drying I'll show you how to make a pencil. To make a pencil just take the trash you get out of drinking a martini, keep it, take it home, carve up the top part of the stick right near the pointing end obviously, sand it down, give it a paint with whatever color your pencil box pencils are, dip the nib into some paint for whatever color the pencil is and there you go. A secret tip I found from Dollhouse YouTube tutorials is that you can use clear nail polish as a varnish and make things have a bit of a shine to them, like a little plastic coating. Oh, that's hot. So you can paint your pencil and I just painted everything including this book cover because maybe it's plastic. When that's dry you can gently cut the pencil part off the stick and there you have it. To glue the pages into the cover I'm just going to slather it in PVA glue and then hold it together. And there's your book and pencil. To build the wheelie chair, I used these three bits of like remote control car pistons, I think they were, to make the legs at the bottom. And I super glued on these beads that I found um, as the wheels. I feel like this worked quite well, just super gluing everything together, but my God, super glue gets everywhere. I found this cool little three prong bead and was thinking for like at least three hours how to attach them until I realized I could make a split and it would bend right over them. 
had it stuck to this piece of camera, but as soon as I'd stuck all the wheels together, it fell off and I realized I didn't like it anyway. I got some film canister lids and used those instead. They looked like a little bit more uniform and I realized that I could stuff the bottom canister and kind of upholster it with, with an old face mask. I just covered the whole thing in super glue basically to hold all of the wonky parts together. Um, also covering myself in super glue, but I googled it and apparently it's no big deal. I used this plastic bit from a quarter inch jack for the sort of like um, concertina plastic that's on the top of the wheelie chair. I realize I don't have any wheelie chair terminology. Um, let me know what all these bits are called. Does anyone know? Now it's time to paint. I got basically all of my painting techniques from Studson Studios videos and scratch bashing videos. I started off by painting the little side tables. It seemed the safest thing before attempting the big desk. It's just gonna be brown with a little lighter brown dry brushing just to give a little highlight. I mixed together some moss green and some black to make this sort of like deep green because the desk itself is a very dark green color. More of a sea green, I think. I'm giving the table a really light dry brushing in just white added to the black and moss green color just to sort of make it look a bit nicer and fancy or I think I'll go back and touch up some of these broader strokes where I didn't really dry the brush enough. Now to crack open my actual model miniature painting paint, this beautiful gold just to cover over the gold that's already on these little bits of electrical metal part. Uh. I made this other table and I originally painted it a raw sienna and it looked really ugly and I hated it so I went back over it with a much nicer lighter brown and then gave it this little blue highlight strip because I didn't want all the furniture just to be brown because I feel like the floors would be brown anyway here it is now it's time to hide all of my terrible super glue mistakes and cutting edges by spraying this wheelie chair black I used a matte black spray and hung it out to dry this base is looking a little shabby, so I've given a little sand on the edges to make it nice and smooth. And here are all the rocks I've collected from outside of different shops where they specifically buy designer rocks to make their shops look good. I uh, picked up some sticks as well. I kind of went back and forth between putting the tables down and placing rocks and marking where the tables would be. And then I secured all the rocks just with hot glue. I was a little hasty and sprayed the base black before I remembered that I had modeling paste specifically for this reason to give it some texture. Don't be hasty. After applying the modeling paste, I re-sprayed it in a matte black. I sprayed the tops of the rocks in a gray primer highlight. Then I added a yellow wash, a brown wash, painted the base brown, and added a black wash overall. Then I thought I would add some patches of green, and then some lighter brown to show where the wheelie chair might have left scuff marks in the dirt. I left the mushrooms till the end because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to make them, so I consulted Anita and my beads box, and I found these half gems, little rhinestone things, and I stuck them to these tiny screws that come with electronics. And I also found these really nice, long, kind of organic looking stalks. Sorry, sir. I took them outside and primed them in white. I had to be careful because the spray can force was really strong and it blew them onto the grass. I started off by painting these toadstools and I painted some other mushrooms like a light brown and then even a pale blue to give them a luminescent look. This was my favorite part, I was clumping together these tiny baby rhinestone screw mushrooms together on this log. I did paint over this log and it felt questionable at the time, but I don't regret it now. I used PVA to cover the whole base and poured some dirt from outside on there. I don't really fully understand what Mod Podge is for, but I used that as well, just some watered down stuff, as well as some isopropyl alcohol to kind of help it dry. Don't worry, I haven't forgot about you. Now it's time to glue all of the miniatures down to the desk.
I made this tiny Mother's Day card that I could place on the top to give it the final touch. And here are the side tables covered in all the miniatures. And here is the final base. Oh! Alright, let's roll the beauty shots. This was a challenging but rewarding build for me. I wanted to make it feel like the artist had left the desk in a state of flow, slowly immersed by the inspiration around her. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Ah.